from Mia. Here's a good question. How do we deal with the dilemma of Indian ex-Muslims? There are legit ex-Muslims. On the other hand, you also have Hindutva backed ex-Muslims. They mostly communicate in Hindi. How to differentiate? Um, Armin, go ahead. Well, I just want to say that the Hindu backed ex-Muslims are also could also be legit ex-Muslims, okay? Like with some bad you, if you are an ex-muslim with some bad views that doesn't make you um not an ex not a legit ex-muslim if you used to be a muslim and now you're not a muslim even if you have views that we disagree with even if you have bigoted views against muslims right you're still you know a, le a legitimate ex you know, ex-muslim right like I, I do see a lot of like hindu backed um ex-muslims in um, in India, a lot of people say like, "Oh, he's not a real ex-Muslim. He's like he's, he's a supporter of Hindutva and stuff like that." What do you mean? He's I mean, if he was a Muslim and he's not anymore, he's a real ex-Muslim. So I just want to get that out of the way. But um, I mean, I don't think we should ignore these kind of ex-Muslims, anyways. I I think we should talk to them and try to convince them that backing Hindutva and working with them is not the right way. I don't think like. The solution is to just like only highlight ex-Muslims that are not Hindutva backed or do not support Hindutva. In fact, because so many ex-Muslims are tempted, you know, living in India and being so, if you're an ex-Muslim who lives in India and you're so annoyed and so um, tired and so hurt by Islam and seeing such a giant force that is Hindutva, agreeing with you and wanting to support you it's obviously very tempting to give in to that right so that's why instead of ignoring these types of ex-muslims we have to reach out to them or else we're going to lose more ex-muslims to hand it for. it's very important for us to stay in touch with those, with those ex-muslims to because if you if you oh actually this is very important this is i think very important if we don't provide a an opportunity for these ex-Muslims in India to come talk to us and maybe find a different community, then they're more likely to go Excellent and join Hindutva point. because we're like, oh, you, you are like with Hindutva, gross, go away. And Hindutva is like, we'll accept you with open arms. And like, oh, they're accepting me. So they're more likely to get closer and closer to Hindutva because we're like, we just have this like standard of like, oh, you have to agree with this, with this, and this, and this, and this. And I, unless we're not going to talk to you, we're not going to engage with you. And oh, they see that they don't meet that standard. And Hindutva, like, all you have to do is talk crap about Islam and then we love you. So they're like, I'm going to go join the community that is welcoming and loving, right? So what we have to do is when we criticize these types of ex Muslims, we have to show that this criticism is coming with you know with love and with understanding with not with love but with like with with friendship yeah, i don't want to exaggerate okay uh, we can't love everybody unlike what christians make it seem like we with friendship and understanding and uh, compassion you know it's okay that we disagree with you you can disagree with us like we will engage with you and we can accept you as ex-muslims in our community but you have to let us have this criticism of you it's not an attack on you like if we could do that to them um we have to accept them and criticize them at the same time because if we don't accept them it's more like it's, it's it, we increase the possibility of ex-muslims joining Hindutva. but yeah go on I'm yeah. talking while I'm muted. Um, I think those are all excellent points. Um, I think when you come across an ex-Muslim who is very sympathetic to um, Hindutva's actions or refuses to condemn the extremism, you just you um, press them on it and say, like, do you really think that this is okay? Like, and the more that they make excuses for it or um, don't condemn it. And you can just really get a sense of that apologism. Um, I think just continuing to press them on it and question them, one helps them reconsider their own point, hopefully. And two, if this is in public, like on a stream or something, or maybe online, like in a forum, other people can see exactly like what that person stands for. And that will speak for itself. 
Like, so if you guys haven't seen it, I highly suggest um, on the Secular Jihadist podcast. You can watch it here on YouTube. Um, Ali and Armin recently talked to the, um, well, purportedly Indian ex-Muslim known as apostate imam. And um, if you want an example of how you really press someone on their Hindutva sympathies, that's a great example. Um, that uh, conversation got really, really good towards the end. Um, and, and it's difficult, especially when someone isn't showing their face or there isn't really a way to reference what they say is their personal experience. Like how much are they fake? Like with apostate Amon, like I'm suspicious. I'm highly, highly, highly suspicious of him just straight up being fake. But you, sh like Armin said, because someone does have Hindu, Hindu sympathies, um, because some of their interests align, that you shouldn't just paint them as fake automatically. Um, and they mostly communicate in Hindi. How do you differentiate? Well, in that case, I have to talk to my friends who know Hindi personally. Um, I have a lot of people really active in the Indian sphere. And they tell me to look out for certain individuals. Um, they're like, hey, this guy like doesn't pass the smell test. Something's off here. We're not, like, or, you know, this is what he supports. Um, so because I only know English, I have to take other people's word for that kind of thing, unfortunately. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.